Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to day 16 of Decktober. Today we're looking at a $50 budget Zarda Hedron Grinder deck tech. Zarda is a 3-3 goblin that says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery that only targets Zarda, copy that spell for each creature you control that the spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. This deck is all about getting a big token army out as quickly as possible, so when we're playing those Zarda target spells, they're triggering millions of times and we're outvaluing our opponents and crushing their life total with our big, strong army. Now, let's get straight into the budget deck tech. As always, we're starting off hot with the ramp and in this budget brew, we have Iron Mere to tap and add a mountain and Plague Mere to tap and add a colorless and have as an infect creature option. There is Mannequin to add a colorless to our pool and Ornithopter of Paradise, a flower that can be tapped for a mana of any color. There is Hedron Crawler for another colorless mana and Runaway Steamkin that gets a plus one plus one counter when you cast a red spell and you can remove three plus one plus one counters to add three mountain. There is Mana Geyser to add a mountain to your mana pool for each tapped land your opponents control and Seething Song to pay three and get five mountain back. There is Skirk Prospector to allow us to sack a goblin and add a mountain to our mana pool and Infernal Plunge to pay, sack a creature and get three red mana. We've got Inner Fire to add a mountain to our mana pool for each card in our hand and Battle Him to add a mountain for each creature you control. There is also Bergy, God of Storytelling, a super important card that allows us to get a red mana whenever we cast a spell and our mana doesn't disappear as we travel three phases. And finally, we have Soul Ring, because Soul Ring. Before we get onto the big token army we're building, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for all things MTG. It's completely free to do and it helps the channel grow and grow as we head towards 2000 subscribers. As we mentioned, now we're looking at the big token army we're creating. First up, we have Siege Gang Commander, the ETBs, and we create three 1-1 Goblin Creature Tokens, and Hordling Outburst, that again creates you three 1-1 Goblin Creature Tokens. There is Kuldotha Rebirth, that allows us to put three 1-1 Goblin Creature Tokens onto the field once we've sacked an artifact. This is where having plenty of artifact creatures will come in useful, as they can be the sacrificial fodder and Beetleback Chief that ETBs and creates us two 1-1 Goblins. We've added in Dragon Fodder and Empty the Warrens to put two 1-1 Goblin Creature Tokens onto the field, with Empty the Warrens having that very useful Storm mechanic. And there's Goblin Instigator to ETB and create you a 1-1 Goblin, with Mog War Marshal doing exactly the same, as well as creating one when it bites the dust. The reason we want to make a weak but large army as soon as possible is that when Zarda's out, if we're casting a boosting spell to target Zarda, Zarda will trigger and then its ability will boost every other token we have too, making a terrifying experience for our opponents. There is Krenko Tin Street Kingpin, that when attacks you put a plus one plus one counter on it, then creating X Goblins where X is Krenko's power, and Krenko's command to put us two more 1-1 one, one Goblin tokens onto the field. We have Goblin Chirurgeon to sack a Goblin and regenerate target creature, and Young Pyromancer that says whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, create a 1-1 one, one elemental creature token onto the field. Finally, there's Forbidden Friendship to create a 1-1 one, one Dino and a 1-1 one, one Human, and Twin Flame to choose any number of target creatures you control, putting a token of each of these targeted creatures onto the field with haste, and their sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. Zarda likes this, but we'll talk about Twin Flame a bit more later. For now though, we're going to be looking at all of the pump spells this budget brew has to offer, First up, we're talking about Fists of Flame, which our very own Meme Master Steve has said is the best card in this deck. You draw a card, and until end of turn, target creature gets plus one plus naught and trample for each card you draw on this turn. Target Zarda when you've got that big token army out, and Zarda will be so powerful and trampling right through your opponent's life total. We've got Brute Force to give target creature plus three plus three, and Infuriate to give target creature plus three plus two, both until end of turn. There's Enthusiastic Study to give target creature plus three plus one and trample until end of turn, and Titan Strength to give target creature plus three plus one until end of turn and letting you scry one. We've added in Samut Sprint to give target creature plus two plus one until end of turn, also with that scrying option, and Sudden Breakthrough to give target creature plus two plus naught, first strike, and you create a treasure token. Remember, any of these we're targeting with Zarda are also going to target each other creature we control, so if we have 10 goblins out, that's 10 strong goblins and 10 extra 3 mana in those treasure tokens. That is huge. We've got Traitorous Greed to gain control of target creature until end of turn and tapping it and giving it haste, again with an insane 2 mana adding option. 
and Heat Shimmer to create a token that's a copy of Target Creature with Haste that again we're exiling at the end of our turn. This being another card we'll speak a bit more about later. There is Assault Strobe to give Target Creature Double Strike until end of turn and Academic Dispute to give Target Creature Reach. Finally we have Storm Strike to give Target Creature plus one plus naught and First Strike until end of turn with the added Scrying ability and Kick in the Door to put a plus one plus one counter on Target Creature as well as Haste and letting you venture into the dungeon. With this potentially being a multi-dungeon trigger when copying with Zarda, you could easily travel through that dungeon in one fell swoop. Now we're looking at the all-important card draw, starting off with the non-targeted card draw in Cathartic Reunion to discard two and draw three, and Faithless Looting to draw two, discard two, and have as a flashback option. There is Thrill of Possibility to discard a card and draw two, and moving on to the targeted card draw, we have Renegade Tactics to make target creature unable to block and draw a card. There is Royal to deal one damage to target creature you control, giving that creature trample and drawing you a card, and Boiling Blood to make target creature attack if able and draw you a card. Any of these cards targeting Zarda are huge, as again, it's then copying to all other creatures you control and drawing you several cards so you can quickly get through your deck and get those key cogs needed to get the win. There is Crimson Wisps and Expedite to give a creature haste and draw a card, and we've also got Stun that says target creature can't block this turn, and again, that trusty card draw. We're also going to slot that Thought Vessel in here. Although it is important ramp, it is more importantly giving us no maximum hand size, so we're not having to go to discard when drawing an absurd amount of cards. Now we're looking at the best of the rest in this deck, and there's only one place to start. First, there is Budget Breaker Imperial Recruiter, the ETBs, and you search for a creature with power two or less, putting it into your hand and the card you want to search for is Storm Kiln Artist. This Dwarf Shaman says whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a treasure token. With all of the spells that we've seen Zarda could be copying, this will end up being a card that will be constantly generating a positive mana for you and one that you can win the game on value alone. Next is Crack the Thumbless that says you flip a coin whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell. If you lose, then return that spell to your hand but if you win, copy the spell and you may choose new targets for that spell. And Rograk, a naught one with First Strike, Menace and Trample. There is Kari Zev's Expertise, another key card save for the best of the rest section, as you can give target creature haste and play a card with mana value 2 or less from your hand for free. And if you've got that full hand and have targeted Zarda, then you could be playing plenty of those cheap spells for absolutely nothing. That is filthy stuff. There is Dual Caster Mage with Flash, the ETBs, and you may copy target instant or sorcery card. A card that is known for the ability to go infinite with the previously mentioned Heat Shimmer or Twin Flame to keep copying in a loop and create that infinite army. And there is Mizium Mortars to deal 4 damage to target creature you don't control with that overload option to deal damage to all creatures you don't control. We have Burning Prophet that will beef up whenever you cast a non-creature spell and then scry one and Ricochet Trap to change the target of target spell with a single target. That's a lot of target. There is Recoup to give a sorcery in your graveyard flashback and Shreds of Sanity to return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. There is a Braid for some damage or artifact removal options and Outnumber to deal damage to target creature equal to number of creatures you control. And now we are finishing up with the lands which is a very short section here starting with the basics of which there are 31 mountains as well as Great Furnace as another artifact option. There is Dwarven Mine that has a chance to create you a 1-1 Dwarf token. And finally, we have Den of the Bugbear that can become a 3-2 Goblin that attacks and creates you yet another Goblin. Zarda is an incredible mono red commander option and one of the more deadly red commanders in the game with an engine that if you don't keep under control early, it'll be something that is near impossible to stop. Make sure to check out Decktober Day 17 tomorrow, where we'll be looking at another mono-coloured commander. But what colour? Make sure to check in and find out. There we have it. That is the $50 Zada Budget Deck Tech. Thanks for watching, and make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for all things MTG. Check out our link tree in the description below for all of our social media and affiliate links. For now though, I'm all tapped out, so I'll see you in the next video.